Well, hey guys, welcome back to Automotive Insight. Today, we're gonna to be talking about bleeding brakes, specifically if you're by yourself, whether that means it's a late night and you're all by yourself in the shop, or you screw up, manage to get air in it, and you don't wanna to draw too much attention to yourself. Uh, there's a couple different ways to do it. We're gonna talk about those. We're gonna actually uh, demonstrate that by introducing some air into a system and showing you how they work. Uh, basically, there's kind of four different methods that, at least that I know of. What about you? Uh, <clears throat> that sounds good. Four sounds good. But there's uh, at least four common ones. Uh, a couple we use uh, most often, and there's some that works, but not the most recommended. Uh, and so basically what those are is the old kind of tried and true vacuum method. So you can use that with the far left on your screen. Uh, kind of vacuum, mighty vac thing. Uh, there is reverse bleeding, where you are basically starting at a caliper or a wheel cylinder or something, and you are forcing new brake fluid back up through the system. Uh, there is one-way check valves that you, in theory, replace the bleeder with it. Uh, this particular one's not the same thread as the one that's on our car, but we, we figured out a way to make it work anyway. And then finally, the cheapest method is uh, just run a tube from your bleeder down into a bottle that's already got some brake fluid in it and pump the pedal. Anyway, we'll show you what all that looks like and uh, we'll try to figure out which one works the best and uh, we'll discuss some pros and cons and maybe which one you, you, know, you might use in the future. So we're gonna do uh, basically a controlled test. This might not be the most real world scenario but uh air is air yeah no so, matter how it gets in there so uh what we're going to do is we're going to uh loosen the bleed screw on it we are going to pump two pumps worth of air into each one and then close the uh the bleeder off and then we'll start doing our uh, our various techniques we're going to do that for each of the four tests so let's get started. So the idea of what we're trying to show you today, if you like replaced your caliper, you know, the banjo bolt had come off or you could have replaced uh, the brake line here. So all this has air in it. Um, and so we're going to show you that it's, it bleeds on its own. And then we're going to induce two pumps of air in it to simulate any of this being replaced. All right, we'll block that off. You wanna see any fluid coming out? No fluids coming out. Just air. So the first method is is going to try is the vacuum with the air operated vacuum pump. Uh, it is my least favorite. It doesn't. It's not the best for removing air. It's more works better more for flushing. But uh, but we'll show this method and show you how why I don't care for it. So and this is just pulling a straight vacuum on it. Okay. So we're going to block that off. My issue is it still seems to have air in it. How's the pedal feel? This one feels good. So as you can see, while it's my least favorite, there's still some air in the system and you have to gravity bleed. It takes a little bit more time uh, to watch it. And you can see it's still not a very fast method. Um, so it's, it's slower and not as 
productive. So, so we're going to pump two more uh, pumps of air into it, uh, and we'll move on to our next test. All right, so this method is, is going to be the reverse, reverse bleeding. We are going to force fluid into the caliper, up the brake line, up to the master cylinder. I don't, I don't use this, uh, but it is, if you had a brand new system, I could see it being handy. But um, as far as a normal uh, brake repair, there is the chance of debris and stuff getting flushed up into the mass cylinder, which is can be fairly sensitive. And that's why I don't I don't choose this method, but we'll demonstrate it anyway. So while he hooks that hose up and starts pumping, I'm going to go up to the master cylinder and we're gonna, in theory, we're gonna watch the fluid level rise and then uh, some air bubbles should come out of it. All right, so we're done reverse bleeding it. Now we're going to see if there's still any air in the system. Yeah, there's still a bunch of air in there. So that's why I don't particularly care for this method. Because uh, there's other simpler hands tired from all that pumping. I'm sure there's probably better kits than what I have, but there's better ways to do this. Is the pedal feel any better? Feels good. All right, so the next method is going to be the one way, our makeshift one way bleeder set up. And then we'll see if we can uh, get all the air out from the last method that probably wreaked havoc with air in it. So with that in there and cracked, um, go ahead and start pumping. It's not too bad. It works pretty good. This pedal feel the same? Feels good. So this last method is is basically the hose in a bottle trick. Um, it's actually a little bit harder by yourself. This brake flush is brought to you by Smartwater. So that allows you to, to do the brake flush or the get the air out. You work the pedal by yourself uh, without having to close the bleeder off. It's kind of the, the cheapest method uh, as far as finding a bottle sturdy enough and the right hose and sizes it can be a little, little tough, but it is the cheapest method. All right, and our last method, how does the pedal feel? Feels good. So uh, on a final note, uh, all these methods will work if you do a uh, master cylinder or a hose or if you live up north, uh, a brake line or whatever, caliper, whatever the issue may be, wheel cylinder. Uh, if you need a scan tool like in the video here where we did the uh, Prius brake booster or whatever. Uh, the comment section was full of, do you need a scan tool to do the brakes? It ain't gonna help you. This and none of these methods are gonna help you do that. Um, this is for kind of traditional style brakes. Well, uh, after all of our tests, the vacuum one is probably not the easiest or um, I take it back. It's probably, probably is the easiest, but it is not the most, I guess, reliable. It still tends to induce air, even after uh, pulling a vacuum out, you still have to let it gravity bleed. So out of ranking, that is probably my least favorite as far as trying to remove air. Plus, if, you, if there's a blockage somewhere, let's say there's a blockage right by the caliper, just by nature, you're, 
you're not going to be able to get past that blockage like you would if you were pushing, uh, say, with a master cylinder. Yeah, I never had the best luck of getting all the air out with just that. Cool. Um, the second one, and probably the most versatile, this is a loaner tool. You can pick up at it, uh, any local parts store. You know, you can buy it for the job, return it, get your money back. But it has ability to, like, reverse bleed also and pull a vacuum on. It is less aggressive, and it works a little bit better than the uh, air-operated vacuum pump. It comes with accessories, and, uh, and it makes the job easier. But it is not my number one pick. And really the reason why is because uh, you can use this the same way that you use that one, and that's all well and good. I'm just sort of opposed to pushing fluid back up through the, uh, the system because, you know, the, the fluid's dirty. And I would, my opinion is that the master cylinder is probably the most critical part. So you're, you're pushing all that dirty fluid right back up into the master cylinder. This is the fluid in this bottle that came out of the car, and this is new fluid. As you can see in the bottom is why I don't like to do the reverse flush, just because that has the potential chance to push even through the ABS module and up to the master cylinder, and potentially causing you more issues. Plus, you're having to keep an eye on the level of the, the fluid. If you're down there pumping away, Next thing you know, you're, you're overflowing through your reservoir. Uh, you kind of have to keep going back and, and uh, taking a look at that. So, yeah, I, I mean, it, it works. I, I don't disagree that it works, but it's definitely not my favorite either. Next up, we have our, our one-way bleeder. Uh, this one, we just kind of pieced this one together because uh, the threads weren't the same. They do sell them online that... Uh, they're not threaded. I mean, this thing's supposed to take the place of the bleeder. Uh, so we just rigged it up with this tube. But they sell them that are the tube by themselves with a one-way check valve in it. I, I love this. I mean, this is the closest thing to having somebody there with you that you can get. Um, and this thing is like 10 bucks. So it, for as small as it is and for what it does... I guarantee this thing can get you out of some jams. So uh, I will definitely be picking up one that uh, isn't as uh, piecemeal together as this one is. But yeah, I, I was I'm quite impressed with these. Uh, and then the last, the absolute cheapest method, just uh, running a tube into a bottle. That is, if you you know you got no other choice, it works just fine. Um, that's a method that, that I've used more than once over the years. Uh, it works just fine. Um, might not be the, you might not be the cool kid on the block with all the fancy tools, but hey, man, flat rate's flat rate. So anyway, that's going to wrap things up for today, guys. Hopefully, we earned a thumbs up from you. Let us know what you think down in the comments section. We have new content for you every single week, so consider subscribing to the channel. And with all that being said, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. This method sucks.